Welcome to part two of the third lecture in experimental vibration analysis. In this video, we continue the discussion of time domain anal analysis, looking at filters. And the content of this video is found in chapter three of the book, Noise and Vibration Analysis. So two things we will talk about in this video. Uh, in the present video, we will first discuss analog filters. And then secondly, we will talk about digital filters. Before going into the discussion of analog versus digital filters, perhaps it's a good idea to take a brief look at, a, at an example signal. Here we see a signal, which uh, could be a typical vibration signal. It contains some variations uh, of a rather slow nature. And then on top of that, you see some fast variations. This could, for example, be the acceleration variation of a high rise building due to a wind load. That would be the slow variations here. Uh, and uh, then the high frequency content could either be noise from the sensors or it could be some higher frequency content from, say, higher order modes. Now, if we remove the higher frequencies from this signal, we obtain this. This is the low frequency part in this case. And if we instead remove the lower frequencies of the signal, we obtain this. And note that these signals are plotted in the same scale. You can think of any dynamic signal as a combination of signals with different frequencies. Analog and digital filters are then techniques to essentially remove some frequencies from the signal. Now, the theory of analog and digital filters is a large and complicated subfield of signal processing. So there is no way we can go through this entire uh, uh, subfield. Instead, actually, we are just going to touch on some of the most important aspects necessary to understand some common procedures used in noise and vibration analysis. We will not go into how to, anal uh, to design analog filters or build them, but such filters are electronic devices uh, made up by electronic components such as resistors, capacitors and operational amplifiers or op amps. Now we usually describe filters by their characteristics which is the same essentially as their frequency response. The three most common types of filters are as indicated here the low pass, the high pass and the band pass filters. The low pass filter should ideally completely block all signals above a certain frequency, which we call the cutoff frequency, F sub C. A high pass filter, on the other hand, should, on the contrary, completely block all the frequencies below the cutoff frequency of that filter. Finally, the band pass filter should ideally block all frequencies outside a certain frequency band the pass band. In all cases, the signals have a pass band and one or more stop bands. The ideal filter characteristics can, however, not be realized in real life. Although, actually, with digital filters, we can sometimes come very close. So some things that are uh, important to understand about filter realizations, as we call real implementations of, of filters, either they're analog or digital, uh, are thus that, first of all, there is always a finite slope, as indicated in the filter here. We cannot go abruptly at the cutoff down to zero in the stop band, but rather there is a slope as indicated here. Secondly, the uh, cutoff frequency F sub C is defined where the characteristics has changed by minus 3 dB. That is, it specifies a, a 
the level where the gain has decreased from 1 to 1 over square root of 2 or to 70% of the level in the passband. So at the cutoff frequency, which is 100 hertz in the plot here, the level is 0.7. Next, the filter order, n, means the asymptotic behavior is proportional to 1 over f to the nth power. That is, if it's a low-pass filter. But similarly, if it's a high-pass or band-pass filter. So here you see um, uh, a low-pass filter of order 1 in blue and 2 in green. And you see that the slope is twice as steep when the order is 2 instead of 1. And finally, to every change in amplitude in a filter, there is a corresponding change in phase. Well, this is true for analog filters, but not necessarily true for digital filters, as we will see. Here you see uh, a common analog filter, the so-called Butterworth filter. There are many different so-called standardized characteristics of analog filters. And these often have different names after people who designed those filters. We will only look at the Butterworth filter here because it's the most important and common filter. This filter often gives a good compromise between amplitude or gain and phase characteristics. In the plot here, we see a first-order Butterworth high-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 100 Hz. Now, in the computer, of course we cannot use analog filters, but we have to use digital filters instead. A digital filter is simply a formula that uses values of an input signal x of n to compute output values y of n. And this can be done uh, in predominantly two different ways. The first and simplest is the FIR filter, the finite impulse response filter. This filter has a formula that produces an output value y of n at time sample number n as a sum of b coefficients times old input values. So, as an example, if nb equals 2. The uh, output value here can be calculated as b sub naught times x of n plus b sub 1 times x of n minus 1 plus b2 b sub 2 times x of n minus 2. This is for mb equal 2. This is very similar to analog convolution. The other type of digital filters uh, which is common, is the so-called IIR filter, the infinite impulse response filter. The special thing about this type of filter is that old output values are added to produce the next output value. Thus the formula looks like this. A sub naught times y of n equals the sum of old input values, as before, but then minus another sum of coefficients uh, that we call A, times old output values. This can be seen as feedback and makes it possible to produce filters with complicated characteristics without using very many coefficients. FIR filters are namely typically rather computer consuming. In many cases uh, of filtering tasks in vibration analysis and in acoustics, as we will see here, uh, the filter is defined as the characterist uh, characteristics of an analog filter. And this is simply because the methods were implemented and standardized before digital filters were around. There is no exact transform of an analog filter into a digital filter. We always talk about approximations. But common to all transforms to transform an analog, analog filter into a digital. 
common to all such transforms is that the digital filter typically performs less like the analog counterpart the closer to the Nyquist frequency one gets. And oversampling thus improves accuracy because we do not come as close to the Nyquist frequency with high oversampling as with a lower oversampling. Another thing is that digital filters always add some time delay to the signal. And this is important to keep track of if the filtered signal is to be compared to the signal before filtering. You can read more about this in the book and look at some examples of it in the chapter examples for chapter 3. And finally, uh, digital filters may have serious phase distortion. Uh, read about phase distortion in section 3.3.2. 3, but then digital filters can also be implemented with ideal phase characteristics, that is, linear phase characteristics. Finally, let's look at an example of how digital filters are implemented in MATLAB. Let us assume that what we want to produce is a first-order low-pass filter with Butterworth characteristics. This is done in two steps. First, the filter, characteristic, uh, filter coefficients are computed using the command butter, like this. B, A equals butter of N, F, C, R and the string low. This produces a low-pass Butterworth filter of order n at a cutoff frequency in the variable fcr. The second command is used to filter the signal, so we produce an output y with a filter command with a syntax of b, comma a, comma x. The cutoff frequency is always in MATLAB specified as part of the Nyquist frequency, so fcr, the relative cutoff frequency, is simply the cutoff frequency in Hertz divi divided by the Nyquist frequency, half the sampling frequency. We should also mention that if ideal phase characteristics are wanted, for example for transient analysis, this can be achieved by using the command filt filt instead of the filter command. Read more about this in the book. And this concludes the second video in lecture 3. You should now continue to the last video, video 3C.